Hey there everybody, Sage Popham here. I'm the founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism and welcome to this week's episode. We're gonna be talking about um, a super important issue here around the remedy licorice root or Glyceriza glabra. This is a very powerful herbal medicine that has been used across the world. Of course, it originates in Chinese medicine, uh, used in Ayurvedic medicine, but as uh, these Eastern traditions of medicine have been making their way west over the decades, uh, licorice is one of those herbs that has become so deeply integrated into Western herbalism that it is basically a Western herb at this point. It's a staple in many an apothecary and clinic, and it's very important to understand how to use this plant correctly um, and especially know how to use this plant safely. Um, there are a number of safety considerations for using licorice root that are very important to follow um, so that you don't create any problems in the people that you are working with. Of course, our goal as herbalists is to help people, is to heal people. Our worst nightmare is to create another problem for them um, and so we definitely don't want to do that. So this week's post is all about um, a question that we recently got from a student about um, someone who actually ended up in the hospital um, with a heart issue from licorice. And so we're gonna dive into this a little bit more. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. It really helps support the channel. Um, thanks so much for joining me here in this issue. And um, we'll uh, hopefully you enjoy this discussion on some of the safety considerations of licorice root. Okay, question number two from Don Galifant. Don is asking, can one use licorice with heart issues? My daughter is a physician's assistant for cardiology and had a patient in hospital from eating two ounces natural black licorice over a couple of weeks. He was seriously ill. Great question there, Don. Um, so uh, licorice root or glyceriza glabra is, um, you know, a super important remedy in both Eastern herbalism as well as Western herbalism. Um, it's a, a very widely used plant. And one of the reasons why it is so widely used is because, um, well, it, it, there's a number of reasons why it's so widely used because it's a really useful plant and it does a lot of different things, right? Um, but what we see in traditional Chinese medicine, one of the main reasons licorice is used so much is because it has the capacity to harmonize or synergize a formula. This is because a lot of herbal medicines are very drying and licorice has a, a very nice moistening effect. We see it being used a lot now in Western herbalism as well because of its adaptogenic properties, right? And, um, you know, and its ability to... Um, spare cortisol in the body, uh, preserve the half-life of cortisol, and therefore help to build up the adrenals, et cetera. It moistens the lungs. I mean, there's all, all, all kinds of stuff that, that licorice does. Um, but one of the main <clears throat> contraindications of this plant is that it does have the constituent in their glycerizin that... <clears throat> um, can raise blood pressure, right? Especially when it's taken in excessive amounts. So what a lot of folks do is they use a product called DGL or deglycerinated licorice, um, which has had that particular constituent removed from it so that it can be consumed in higher amounts. Uh, oftentimes in the supplement world, you see these in the form of chewable tablets actually, um, because the moistening property and antiviral property and such of licorice is quite excellent for treating gastric ulcers and heartburn and things like that. It's very soothing, very cooling, reduces heat and inflammation and irritation in the upper GI. Um, so we'll see that being used a lot, but the DGL is also used a lot. So it can be consumed in higher amounts for its more adaptogenic cortisol sparing effects. Um, so one of the big contraindications for this plant is people with high blood pressure or people on high blood pressure medication. It is generally recommended not to use licorice. Um, if it is going to be used, it should be used in the deglycerinated form. 
and under the supervision of a physician. That's just my personal opinion. So we don't end up in this situation with someone in the hospital. Um, now, this is interesting from eating two ounces of natural black licorice over a couple of weeks. Um, I, I guess... I guess I always thought that the black licorice candy didn't actually have the herb licorice root in it, right? Um, because, you know, the, technically the flavor of black licorice is, um, it's more of fennel, right? Fennel is more the flavor of, of black licorice. Um, licorice root in and of itself really just tastes sweet, right? It has more of a sweet, demulcent taste and property, um, the actual flavor of black li licorice is much more akin to fennel or anise. Um, of course, the original licorice <clears throat> candy was, you know, more of an herbal formula that actually had those plants. But, you know, I guess when I think of, you know, the candy, uh, I, I mean, I don't really eat candy, so I didn't realize that the black licorice actually had licorice extract in it. And I'm, I would imagine there's different companies that do it in different ways. I'm sure very conventional black licorice probably is just natural flavors or artificial flavors um, to give you that taste without actually having the herbs in there. But maybe there are more natural forms of black licorice that actually do contain that herb. So yeah, absolutely. It is something to be cautious with. I'm curious if this person had um, a pre-existing heart condition I would imagine they did if they, especially if they ended up in the hospital. Um, but um, this is definitely something we need to be aware of um, with this remedy. And, you know, it, I think it's always important to look at the traditions where this remedy originated from, which really is Chinese medicine is where we see the most <clears throat> um, longest term usage of this plant. They know how to use this plant very well. And the main way that this plant is predominantly used is usually in formula in not super high amounts. Um, so it is possible that this side effect emerged. You know, this person possibly was, you know, eating really, really high amounts of this plant that would be much, you know, outside of its traditional usage and dosage. So I think it's important to really look at the traditions and make sure that we're, you know, heeding their... Um, their wisdom and their hard worked, uh, hard won knowledge about a plant over who knows how many, possibly thousands and thousands of years, right? So this is important. Licorice root usually is used in formula in smaller amounts. When I formulate with licorice, it usually doesn't take up more than 10% of the formula. More often than not, it's 5% of a formula, of a tincture formula, simply because more than that, and it, and it kind of, it, it almost kind of takes over, right? It is pretty strong. Uh, it kind of overrides when, when you taste the formula, all of a sudden you're just tasting licorice and it's kind of masking the flavor of a lot of the other herbs. And the flavor of the herb is important because that's one of the primary ways that the plant is communicating with the body. <clears throat> so, um, so be cautious in your use of licorice. Um, don't give it in excessive amounts and always be cautious in people that have pre-existing cardiac conditions. I'll share a little story. Um, I was in the Southwest in the Coconino National Forest in Arizona to participate in an herb conference down there. Um, oh boy, that conference has taken on a whole lot of different names over the years. I believe at the time it was called Tr the Traditions in Western Herbalism Conference, something along those lines, Traditional Western Herbalism Conference. I can't remember the name of it. It's gone through a lot of iterations over the years. Anyways, um, I was there and I'm from Washington, right? It rains a lot in Washington. I'm used to a very damp environment and being down in the desert in the Southwest was like, yikes. I felt like the air was just sucking all the moisture out of me. My eyes were dry. My skin got dry. My mouth was dry. My nose was dry. I just felt like everything. I felt like I was just being wrung out. Um, probably because I was. And, um, and, uh, and it was kind of making my lungs feel a little dry. I was getting the tickle in my throat and I was just like, oh man, I, this dryness is killing me. So we were, I was down there with a friend of mine. We were vending 
or spagyrics at the conference. So I had all my spagyrics there and I was like, well, I'll just, you know, take some licorice root, right? To help moisten everything up. And so I was, you know, and of course I had kind of like forgot about the cardiovascular effects of licorice. So here I'm taking, I'm taking the licorice, I'm taking the licorice. I'm not like really probably being as mindful with it as I should have been. Um, it's busy and there's a lot going on. So I'm taking like squirts of licorice, like multiple times a day. And, uh, and I remember at the end of the day, my friend and I were walking back to our camp and I was like, whew, all of a sudden I was kind of like, like breathing a little heavy, you know, and, and she, uh, my friend's an, a naturopath and she looked at me, she was like, are you okay? And I was like, I just feel like really short of breath right now. We were just walking, like we weren't going uphill or anything. And, uh, and I was like, man, like my heart, like, I feel like my heart feels like a, a taut bowstring, you know? I was like, I feel like I can't take a deep enough breath. And, and she, and so she felt my pulse and she listened to my heart. She had her stethoscope. She listened to my heart and she was like, dude, your like heart rate is super increased right now. Um, she was like, how much of that licorice did you take today? And you know, I like went through, I think over half the bottle, like, like way too much. And she was like, oh yeah. She was like, you probably have like um, a bit of a high blood pressure thing going on, right? Like at a very acute, very high level blood pressure um, thing going on. She didn't have a blood pressure cuff, so couldn't really test it. But just based on the symptomatic pattern, she was like, yep, um, you're just gonna have to ride it out. You know, um, at the time we didn't really know of any antidotes for it aside from some nervines. So it just took some nervines and helped settle things a little bit. But in a way, I just kind of had to ride it out, take some deep breaths. Um, it was very uncomfortable. It was a little alarming. Um, and I could absolutely see if someone had a pre-existing heart condition, that could be a super dangerous situation. So I have personally experienced um, that this side effect from licorice and never forgotten about it ever since. And again, this is um, one of the main reasons why I always encourage herbalists to take the remedies that you work with, to experience them, to not have your understanding of plants only be book knowledge, right? Um, you really, you know, cause like, yeah, I had probably read about licorice, you know, doing that and having this contraindication and this safety consideration and this side effect. I'd probably read about that in who knows how many dozens of herb books, heard it lectured when I was in university. It had been t told, I'd intellectually learned that so many times, but I didn't retain it because we don't retain what someone tells us all the time. We don't retain what we read. We retain our experiences. And I think this is just another really good reason why we need to taste our herbs. We need to take our herbs, experience them for ourselves. And yeah, maybe push the limit a little bit, right? Maybe take those herbs in excess um, so that we can experience that side effect. Uh, me, you know, obviously making sure it's not going to harm you in any way, but um, it is good to go for it sometimes so that you can really learn that remedy inside and out. So thanks for the great question, Don. Um, I guess I went on a whole bunch of tangents there, but the essence of the answer, can one use licorice with heart issues? The short answer is no. Um, it's really preferable not to. And um, you can look into using DGL if it is appropriate. Um, but it needs to, they, the person needs to be overseen by a physician to make sure they're not having any problems. In general, I think it's, I tend to lean on the safe side and just try to use something different. So, um, hope that answers your question and thanks so much for asking it, Don.